Bucks back in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. Next up on Championship Week, the Atlantic 10 from Philadelphia. Xavier, the top seed from the West, leading two seed Richmond by two. That's next. Welcome here to the first union spectrum in Philadelphia. Championship week presented by 7-Up, the Atlantic 10 Tournament Finals. Day Strader along with Tim McCormick. Welcome all of you that saw two. Get uh, pressure there by Skip Prosser's Wake Forest Club, and now we have Skip Prosser's former team here, the Xavier Musketeers, under their first-year head coach, Thad Mata, 23rd of the country, and the best record overall in the regular season of the A-10 here in the finals against Richmond. And the Richmond Spiders with the early one-point lead, but that's going to go away as Keith Jackson just into the ball game, the first uh, substitution of the game, able to get the lead back as we take a look at who's on the floor right now for the Xavier Musketeers, Fry, West, Chalmers, Sato, and Jackson. Jackson, the first uh, substitution. Strocky, Collins, Ungerer, Myers, and Brown, the starting five for Richmond still out there. And what I'm expecting in this game is a ton of missed shots. You've got two great defensive teams covering tired jump shooters. And Dave, the big mismatch in this game is going to be Xavier's ability to hit the boards. Richmond is small, and they're not known as a good rebounding team. Those of you that follow Xavier will miss David Young. The junior was injured in their quarterfinal win over UMass at the hairline fracture and uh, is expected to be able to play when Xavier plays their first game of the NCAA tournament. Rocky with a good ball fake, kicks it out to Brown. He's got the big score in the first two games. Collins uh, tried to get to that loose ball but lost his footing a bit. And so it will be Xavier basketball. There's Stad Mata. What a great job he did at Butler last year, leading them into the NCAA tournament. You see what he's done here. That's 24-5. Uh, and five. And John Beeline, his fifth season at Richmond, but this is Richmond's first year in the Atlantic 10 after uh, having the best record in the Colonial Athletic Association last season. Richmond plays a 50-50 split man zone. Their 1-3-1 is their best defense. Reminds me a lot of what John Chaney does at Temple. Here is West now. Pressured by Collins underneath. Nice cut there by Jackson. So keep Jackson with David Young out of the lineup. This is the guy that's going to get more minutes than he normally would. Keith Jackson, who has not scored more than eight points in a game this season. Well, Fan Mata says that any offense he gets from Jackson is a bonus, but you're going to love this kid's athleticism. Well, he's got five points from him already here in the early going. And Xavier with the four-point lead. Unger had it knocked away with a quick hands of Lionel Chalmers. On the move now with West Chalmers. The lob pass That's with the emphatic finish. <laughs> uh, the A-10's version of unstoppable. He's a stud in the half-court game. And how many big guys that do so much work with their back to the basket can be a front court sprinter like that? A special player. Rocky being watched by Romain Sato, one of two Xavier players on the conference all defensive team. Old Sato and West. Rocky drives nice bounce pass, but out of the hands of Collins. Richmond, one of the best teams at not turning the ball over in the country, and West a hard foul there by. Collins. 7-0 run by Xavier and great chemistry between Chalmers and West here. Yep. Dave, on the NBA's wish list, they're looking for big guys that have great feet and great hands. David West has both. Little, little over the top, and that's the key that we talked about before the game, that David West is a player that can dominate this thing. Richmond does not have an answer for him on the front line. Well, the guy that would be the closest to that answer, Jonathan Collins, 6'9", and just under 200 pounds, has to sit down. And that brings in number 25, Patrick O'Malley. The scary thing for A-10 teams. So far, Xavier has not got it done very well on the offensive end. They sputtered to start the first two games. They've won it on the defensive end, but now, when the offense is working too, this is a very tough team to cover. Here's O'Malley being pressured by West, and away from the ball, we have a whistle. And it may be uh, Romain Sato, yes, who was called for the grab. Well, tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the Conagra Foods Big East Championship culminates with the championship game at 8 Eastern right here on ESPN. Number 24, Connecticut, led by Karan Butler, fourth of the league in scoring. We'll take on number seven, Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh led by Brandon Knight, averaging nearly 16 a game. College Basketball Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. I believe I picked UConn before it started. You picked Pitt. You are absolutely right about that. It's Crocky on a difficult runner. And you also picked Memphis in the uh, Conference uh -huh. USA, but I'm going to try not to mention that. Oh, or did I just mention that? Yeah, I, I think you did. <laughs> Here is Fly, wanted to kick it weak side, couldn't get it there. Chalmers with a hard ball fake, but Reggie Brown stays right on him. Musketeers, star driven on the offensive end. In my estimation, West and Sato are the best players in the A-10, and it creates a lot of space for guys like Kevin Fly. Well, Fly is in a three-pointer. And uh, now adds the inside bucket to give him five points. So Xavier getting it from Keith Jackson and Fly. As you enjoy the work there on the offensive end by Richmond, they remind me a lot of Princeton. They've got five perimeter guys. They spread the court. All of them can dribble, pass, and shoot the ball. Here is Myers to the baseline. Has a fourth and difficult shot. And Fly able to get the rebound. attacking the basket and uh, ball is knocked away well only two players in conference history have ever won the defensive player and overall conference player of the year one was Pepe Sanchez the other this guy David West and the Buckeyes finally vowed to take the conference tournament seriously against a very hot Illinois team. The Ohio State guards were just a little bit hotter. Down low with the post up is Brian Brown. He had 24 inside of 35 seconds. They're up by five. In the Big 12, Oklahoma will meet Kansas, the top two seeds, three Eastern tomorrow on ESPN. And out of the MIAC, the top seed Hampton earns the automatic bid with their 26th victory over Howard. Dave, Tim. All right, Chris and Digger, thanks very much. Championship week presented by 7-Up. And look at this matchup tomorrow, the ACC championship game. What are you going to circle there? Well, what I'm looking at is Oklahoma because if they are able to beat Kansas, the number one team in the country, I think they go ahead and get themselves the number one seed over Cincinnati, who took care of business today. NC State took care of business. They'll play Duke in the first game of that doubleheader and then followed by the Big 12 championship game. And here we're looking to crown a champion in the Atlantic 10. The conventional wisdom says if Richmond wins this game, the Atlantic 10 gets two teams. If Xavier wins it, it's going to be just the Xavier Musketeers. The only conference team with a resume to earn an at-large bid. And Kevin Fry uh, a bit puzzled there as he thought he had planted that uh, pivot foot pretty solidly, but he was called for the travel. Big challenge for Thad Mata's team. The first two times these squads met, they were confused and frustrated. They won both games, but yet you saw him drag his pivot foot. He did drag his pivot foot. Good job by the officials here. A three-point miss leads to a long rebound, and they were able to track it down. West wants it on the inside. Had the mismatch with O'Malley. Now West is double team. Jackson to Chalmers. Chalmers looks like he's come to play this afternoon, but just as I say that, he makes a bad decision and throws it away over the head of Jackson. Uh, what, what Chalmers is saying to keep Jackson is stay there. He, he had it in his mind, Tim, that he was going to suck the defense in and kick it out to Jackson for the three, and Jackson basically followed behind Chalmers. Yeah, and worth revisiting part of the miscommunication. Dave Young has the hairline fracture. He's out. Started 28 straight games, so it's going to take a little while for the Young guy to get involved. Each team has committed three turnovers. And again, Richmond, one of the best teams in the country, has taken care of the basketball. What I'm seeing here is that Richmond relies on threes. They shot 29 last night. That's a huge number. Xavier is loaded up covering the three-point line. You know why? Because David West is controlling the lane. Nice look by Stocky. And well, you talked about Keith Jackson and how we would like his energy. He came over and knocked that ball away and pumped his fist. Oh. It's a double problem inside because notice his eyes. He's looking right at Taylor West. He's scared to death of the A-10's best shot blocker, Jackson, looming large along the weak side. That's a, that's a manly block shot right there. He wound up. Just a freshman out of Purcell Marion High School in Cincinnati. Three ball on the way. Just beats the shot block. That's his first basket. Reggie Brown is one for five. He's wildly inconsistent player. He had 30 in the first round game, 20 last night. 
great, great high energy game. Shooting 16 of 31 from the field in the first two games of this tournament. Jason Williams here for Xavier, and he answers with a three of his own. Jason Williams, the freshman out of Aurora, Colorado. Xavier's hit three out of five here in the early going from beyond the arc. There is West out to Taylor. Scrocky and knocks him all the way. Scrocky is the guy that needs to get going. He's a double-figure scorer. His offense has been a little bit of a funk. Another unforced turnover. That's very surprising because John Beeline's team is in the top three or four in the nation protecting the ball. You know, I, wanted, I think there's a strong correlation between success in the post and getting wide open shots. On that possession, it was a triple team of the Spiders, kind of a spider web around David West. They got him wide open for the three. Yeah, Richmond uh, averages just under 10 turnovers a game, and in the two games against Xavier, though, they committed 14 and 15, respectively. Fly pulls up from a three that is strong. Well, Xavier's defense has had something to do with Richmond uh, committing the turnovers as Brown goes to the baseline. Nice dish underneath to O'Malley. Catch foot basketball there. Draw the double team and find another teammate. Uh, and that's a great idea to explore transition because Xavier has the best field goal percentage defense in the conference while trying to hit before they set up before David West gets his shot blocking in there. Xavier with the ball on the six-point lead. Second team all pass with long three is uh, short, but there was a foul call before he let the shot go, and it was away from the ball. Doesn't Sato look a little bit frustrated to you? He, he's 0 for 2 from the field, but this is one of the best players in the conference. He's not getting shots. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Atlantic 10 Conference Championship game. Richmond taking on Xavier. Dave Grader along with Tim McCormick. Here with the first union spectrum. As you look at Xavier, no surprise, uh, having the better approach in the paint. But here's Underer. He's going to add two more to that total with the easy lay-in. And that foul on the other end was against David West in the low post. Underer now with seven points. The 6'7 senior from Syracuse, New York. He's about as efficient a player under as you're going to see in the Atlantic 10. Jason Williams, another three ball off the back iron, off the top of the backboard. Sprocky with the rebound. Here come the Spider. Brown, aggressive to the basket, puts it up. No good. And West comes away. Great opportunity for Richmond there. Goes by the board. Yeah, there's one thing I can almost promise you, Dave, that Xavier will win the rebounding battle in this game. Mark that down. But the key thing for Rich, they get out rebounded every game. They just need to try to keep it close. Well, Clyde, he needs some help and had it slapped away by Unger and a foul call against Unger. Well, John Beeline's team plays great fundamental basketball. And they're going to have to call upon all of their resources against this very athletic Xavier team. The give and go there results in two for Unger. Got some quality work going on the defensive end. The Richmond Spiders know that David West is unguardable with one guy. So what do the Spiders do? They build a spider web around him, trying to contain him. <laughs> And the problem is, you can't possibly cover everybody. You got him right there. Watch the pass out to the wing. It's wide open. And as I said, there's a strong correlation between David West's success inside and Lionel Chalmers getting threes. I can't wait for you to draw a musketeer. <laughs> Great job with the spider web. So Jason Williams, uh, number one, seeing some playing time here along with Chalmers in the backcourt. Anthony Coleman has checked into the ball game now as Kevin Fry sits down. Remain center with David West. And Thomas, the three starters that remain on the floor for Thad Mata. Here is Coleman now. With the ball reversal here by the Musketeers. Thomas looking inside for West. Pass is knocked away, and Unger has it. again. That time it was O'Malley as the Richmond Spiders able to get into the 
paint and get some damage done. I'm totally surprised that the Spiders have had so much success going inside. That's the strength of the Xavier defense. How do you answer a 7 0 Xavier run? A 9 3 run of your own, and that's what Richmond has done. Shadow's short jumper rattles in and out. And here come the Spiders with a chance to tie or take the lead. Sato on him, Strocky, all the way to the lane, kicked it back out, Unger with the ball, they had a moment there, but didn't pull the trigger. Although he thought about it. Now Tony Dabbles, number one, who checked in for the Richmond Spiders. Now the weave to Myers. O'Malley will watch the three, but it's no good, and Romain Sato snaps it, and that's mine. Romain Sato has some of the biggest, strongest hands that you're ever going to find out of guard. Post action inside. You have to get physical with David West. If you let him catch on the block, he is going to kill you. O'Malley tries to bump him early. That's what you do. And as physical as things have been, a bit of a surprise that that was called. Joe so O'Malley, the freshman from Charleston, West Virginia. He was USA Today's West Virginia High School Player of the Year out of George Washington High School last season. <laughs> Rocky's going to sit down, and uh, Reggie Brown checks back in. Well, that's going to bring yep. Chad Mata to a slow boil. Well, the pass was right on. David West just wasn't ready for it. This is a championship game, guys. Look at Oh, yeah. He, he looked away. Boy, don't take your eyes off the passer until the ball's in bounds. Six turnover there by the Musketeers. Richmond again. Second possession now. They've had a chance to tie this thing or take the lead. They nearly throw it away. They get it on the inside. Blocked by Shadow, but a foul. And Richmond also calling for goaltending. Two shot foul. Yeah, if you're going to attack the X-Men inside, you've got to bring a macho attitude. Musketeers are so much bigger and stronger, and the only way you've got a chance to beat them is if you challenge them inside. And the big thing I'm seeing here is that Richmond doesn't have a chance to run their perimeter offense because Xavier is spreading their defense out, so all those gaps and seams to the basket are letting them have some success. Second foul on Sato, and it does appear that he got his hand on the ball before it hit the glass. Well, Sunday, the U.S. men's national team will attempt to make history in a tune-up before the World Cup. They take on Ecuador, a team that the U.S. has never Never beat Sunday live at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific only on ABC Sports. Well, you get USA and Ecuador together. That's, that's a matchup right there. USA's done a great job in the soccer program, haven't they? Absolutely. You would have been a great soccer goalie. I would have been good, wouldn't I? Well, except I'm slow. Dabble tips the two free throws, and we've got a tie ball game. Just over five and a half remaining here in the fourth half in the first game of Spectrum. Man-to-man defense. Keith Jackson, who came into the ball game with Sonic, picked up that second foul. Now, Coleman with a point over the good, and O'Malley with the rebound. This is their jumbo package defensively with West and Coleman. They have a lot of defense. They're going to need something because Richmond has got to win. Oh, 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 oh. Make it a 10 0 run. He is right. Is Brown on the cut? That Mata wants to talk things over and asks uh, Lionel Chalmers to get it over the midcourt line and then call the timeout. You know, Richmond runs such a unique system. Watch that. They're trying to three-quarter front. He's going to get a lot of attention. Anytime he catches, he's going to have guys coming, and they boxed him out very well. That's the way you do it. You put your backside right into their gut, put your arms up, and David West has the propensity to go over people's box. Well, once again tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the ConAgra Foods Big East Championship will culminate with the championship game 8 Eastern right here on ESPN. Number 24 in the country, Connecticut takes on number 7, Pittsburgh. UConn 23 and 6, led by Karan Butler. Pittsburgh 27 and 4 coming into the championship game. College basketball championship week presented by 7-Up on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. You know, the, the key to that game is that Brandon Knight is the co-player of the year along with UConn's Karan Butler. But the Huskies are going to send Tony Robertson and Talik Brown. It's going to be a two-on-one situation. Let's see what Thad uh, Mata's club does here out of the timeout. With under five minutes to go in the half. And trailing by two. 
Big challenge here is that... Uh-oh. Big challenge is to try to get it away from Dobbins, one of the Steel's leaders all time, and he took the impact, made the shot, no foul called. And Dobbins, 65 steals coming into this game, third best single season mark in Richmond history. So you've got to be careful when number one is on the court. Lob inside to West, and he is fouled. And Dobbins thought he had all ball coming from the backside. Notice, reading the eyes, Dobbins is their best defender. He has long arms, averages about two and a half steals per game. You like that no call? Go to the basket like that? Sure. <laughs> oh, can I, I tackle it? I could, I could live with it. Hey, the players have to know, though, this game has been very consistently officiated. They're not calling the cheap fouls, guys. You're going to have to go out strong. You're going to have to have a macho attitude and finish your shots because they're not going to bail you out of this one. You see David West and his work in the uh, semifinal victory here last night against Dayton. David West did get into a little bit of foul trouble in that game. Speaking of cheap fouls with that third one that was called on him last night, but uh, came back strong. Part of the reason that David West spent a lot of February in foul trouble is his perimeter guys have been breaking down, and that puts him in jeopardy. Now Dallas hands it off to Brown. Brown into the paint, ball for Jeffrey is good. And Reggie Brown, the junior out of Flushing, New York, with seven points. Remember, if Xavier loses this game, they're still going to the NCAA. For Richmond, this is their ticket. Fry, open for the three, but it's no good, and it's tipped by West, but controlled by Brown of Richmond. On the wing, here is Myers, out to Unger, wide open for the three, and he hits it! Scott Unger! He hit a huge, huge three-pointer last night, late in the victory over LaSalle, after Jeff Myers had hit key basket after key basket. It was Myers who became the decoy, and he does the same thing here. Hands it off to Unger, and he delivers. Richmond with a seven-point lead. Circuit City. Fans here reading, along came a spider. Well, along came the Richmond Spiders, and they're trying to spoil the party for the Musketeers. Come on, you can't read a book in this case. There's Unger nailing the jump shot, and I'm very surprised because fatigue usually affects outside shooting both of these teams knocking down the shots well chalmers kicks it out to jason williams again remains shadow on the bench with two fouls and tried to force it inside unger has it kicks it off now to reggie brown all the way to the basket lays it in boy and that looked like a kick by richmond on the defensive end a 19-2-1 in the last six plus minutes by the richmond spiders 33-24 lead over the Musketeers. Chalmers for the three ball, and he hits it. Lionel Chalmers getting three back for the Musketeers. He has two field goals, both from behind the arc, six points. Ricky Brown being harassed there by Lionel Chalmers. Now Strzokie with Myers looking for the cut. Fighters are not very athletic, but you know what they have? They, they've got a team just with a bunch of ballers. These guys understand the game. They know how to pass, cut. Doesn't really recruit the great athletes, but they know how to play. Down to two seconds on the shot clock, and Unger shows that he can create if he needs to with the running one-hander from straight away off the glass. That is not an easy shot. He has hit five out of six, has 12 points. They got it to fly. Now Williams, good ball fake there, open for the three that is way off the mark, and Dobbins lost his balance, down on the court, able to play it ahead. The Reggie Brown, Brown holds up from the free throw line, and that was strong, and speaking of strong, how about the rebound by West? Yeah, he grabbed that about a foot above the rim. David West has been quiet. They're launching jump shots rather than going inside. That's what this defense really tries to promote. Oh, nice play by Jason Williams. After
to the offensive rebound. He took it right into the teeth of the defense and switched to the left hand to lay it in. Okay, remember earlier I said that Richmond's defense reminds me of Temple? Same game keys for Xavier. If you're going to beat that kind of defense, you've got to make jumpers. Longer with a nice spin move to get a good opportunity, but misses it in tight. Now Chalmers with a crossover dribble. Nice dish there to West, and he lays it in. That's what penetration by the point guard will do for the big fella. Ten points now for David West. The 2002 Atlantic 10 Player of the Year and the Defensive Player of the Year. Four-point Richmond lead. Hunter makes the pass, sets the screen, then rolls. Now Strocky gets into the lane, lays it up too strong, and Jackson with a rebound. One shot possession. Remember, the best Musketeer possession starts with the David West post touch. He either scores or finds people. Best passing big man in the conference. Shot clock is way too low. Down to the end of the half here is Chalmers all over the basket. What a block there by Dobbins. What a defensive play by Tony Dobbins to end the half and deny what looked like a short two points for Lionel Chalmers. You notice from the weak side, he had it timed perfectly. Look at that. He caught that thing right at the top of the square. Wow. Well, coming up on the 7-Up Halftime Report, North Carolina State is moving on. Record does it again, and the final is set in the Southeast Conference. That and the rest of college basketball. Let's go back to Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Guys, okay. lays it up and in. Kevin Fry getting off to an early start here in the second half, as he did in the first. He's a special kind of player. He is not going to be appreciated by the fans because he doesn't put up big numbers, but he does all the little stuff. And as we expected, we're going to see a very focused Musketeer defense. John Beeline with his uh, starters out on the floor. He's got Jonathan Calvin back in there. He picked up the early uh, two personal fouls, but a turnover here by Richmond. And now Xavier with the basketball and a chance to tie things up. Look at the explosion by Lionel Chalmers. Kicks it out to Jackson. The fly, they reverse it. Chalmers, who started this offensive sequence, ends up with the ball in the corner and hits the three. More than anybody else, Lionel Chalmers is the barometer. When he's playing well, Xavier's offense and defense play. Almost down with nine points, all on three pointers, and Xavier back in front by one. Remember, starting the game, Richmond was a perimeter-oriented team. Xavier made the adjustment. The Spiders won inside. Now Myers, who attempted only one shot in the first half, picks it off and under, able to hit the three. Scott Under, who hits about 40% from behind the arc over the course of the season. He is the only Richmond Spider ever to have more than 400 points, 400 rebounds, and 400 assists in his career. Not great numbers individually, but you add those types of numbers up over those categories, Tim, he is a special player. Right, and he actually has over 800 points this season. Six of eight. Here's the under from the floor, and inside remains Sato, who had to sit on the bench because of a couple of personal fouls for an extended period in that uh, first half. And obviously when I say he has 800, 800 total at the end of this year, doesn't have 800 this year. As Kenny Bain would say, that'd be some kind of record. <laughs> Here is Chalmers. Boy, he has been aggressive offensively. That's a difficult shot from that angle. And it starts Reggie Brown the other way. He pulls up for the 15-footer, but it's short. Myers with the rebound off the glass. That is no good. Kicked out, Reggie Brown has it. He will launch the three, and that is good. So it starts out with Myers missing a couple of easy opportunities, but they stay on the glass. Sato. But Jackson, that is knocked away by Collins. Jackson again, a couple of ball picks and a foul. Keith Jackson bringing some good energy here in the second half. The weakness of the defense in transition is rebounding. You're running back, trying to protect the goal. They kick it back out. And this is a great shooting team. Notice the block inside. One of the big weaknesses of the Musketeers is for whatever reason, they ignore David, Stratt, David West for long stretches of the game. When you look at his first half numbers, 
three out of three from the field. He had four free throws, made them all. He had three assists. At some point, they've got to try to get him more touches because he's so efficient with the ball. Jackson got a friendly roll on the first one and uh, cleanly makes the second. And the Richmond Spiders with the ball and a one-point lead, seven points for Jackson, just one off of his career high, the freshman. We mentioned uh, eight points a couple of times during the course of the season. Another Richmond turnover here with Xavier, as they did last night against Dayton in the second half, Tim. They can turn a game around with defensive possession. Time of the baseline, difficult shot. He lost control of the ball, and Myers, I think, upset with himself that he committed that foul. Sato had a very difficult first half. He did not score. The guys getting frustrated in there. Lionel Chalmers in a bad mood. Remember the Temple game? Romain Sato went up against this kind of a defense, the matchup zone. Exactly right. He got shut out in the first half, got frustrated, got shut out in the second half as well. It's very important that he has a mature approach and just stays within his game because he's too good a player. Here you see his number three points, and it was uh, not long ago, back on February the 20th, when he had no points and three rebounds in that loss at Temple. And in the five games since then, including the two in this tournament, averaging over 16 points and six rebounds. So he's had the mature attitude to bounce back from that game, and now he's facing a similar defense. Let's see how he responds. Scrocky open for the three, and he hits it. Mike Scrocky, the sophomore from Howell, New Jersey, out of Christian Brothers High School, a uh, Atlantic 10 2002 all third team selection and an all academic selection. Richmond can be proud of the fact that they had three players on the Atlantic 10 all academic team. Thought of a quick touch pass, a rest down the half hook, no good, but it tipped up and in. It's a great possession. You get a couple ball reversals and a post touch, your offensive efficiency goes way up. And I'm just looking at Richmond thinking somebody should tell these guys that they're supposed to be stuck. They'll be tired after three games, but they're not. They're stoking the ball. John Beeline made a beeline for his seat. Well, he's furious. He got there with a foul on that play. Hero Sato, he had the tip the last time down. Goes straight to the basket and puts it in. Eight points for Sato now, all here in the second half. And Xavier back in front by two. And John Beeline. Oh, he is furious. Oh, he's mad. Three turnovers here in the second half. Remember, they went the last nine minutes without one in the first half. Long three on the way, and that is good. Reggie Brown. He became the 34th Spider to reach the 1,000-point career mark in the first game of the tournament against St. Bonaventure, but only the ninth to do it in his third year. Reggie just a junior out of Archbishop Malloy High School. And away from the ball, a foul against Xavier. So the man that was the man of the first two games of this tournament, Reggie Brown, with a big three here early in the second half. Cormac picked a USC to win that uh, Pac-10 tournament. How about Romain Sato's adjustment? Yeah, two, two things I really love about his game. He makes threes, and it scares the defense to death, so they get out there and cover him. But he's able to put the ball on the deck and get aggressively to the rim. And as we talked about earlier, this is a guy that has exploded on the scene. Last year as a freshman, he was good, but nobody, I mean, nobody anticipated that he could be an MVP candidate. Take a look at the points in the paint, and uh, Richmond, of course, uh, with their screens and back cuts and going to the basket, able to get several points, as you saw, in the paint area. And so far, nothing as they've gone back to the outside. But that really shows the versatility of their offense, Tim. The three-pointer wasn't there in the first half. They went inside. The inside taken away. They go outside. And right here, a foul. That's going to go against Jackson, his first. A little bit of a different approach by Richmond. Remember, last night in the semis, they launched 29 threes. They weren't shooting great, but they kept at it. Very much different because they're not shooting as many, but they're more efficient here in this game. Rocky hits the first championship week. The letter by seven up winds down tomorrow with two final championship games at one Eastern. The ACC championship takes place 
between the winners of today's semifinals and North Carolina State shocked a lot of people, including Maryland. They'll take on Duke. The ACC championship game is subject to blackout at 3 Eastern. The Phillips 66 Big 12, Oklahoma taking on Kansas. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Richmond here with a three-point lead over Xavier. Xavier won both regular season meetings, and on the inside, Fry able to uh, fight off the attempted block there by Strachey to finish, and nine points for the senior. That's the best place to attack the 1-3-1 one, one, is along the baseline side. That time looks a little flatter, though, more like a 2-3. little dribble weave up top. Kind of like a Harlem Globetrotters look, except there's no metal arms left in the middle. Now here is Unger into the lane. Kicks it out, brought on with a long three on the way that's off the front iron, and uh, Keith Jackson with the rebound, hands it off to Chalmer. Atlantic 10 Championship. Championship week presented by 7-Up here from the First Union Spectrum alongside Tim McCormick broadcasting his last game as a 30-year-old on Dave Strader. <laughs> and again, the uh, field goal percentages continue to be very high in a game featuring two very good defensive teams. And Tom, of course, he really has had the stroke from beyond the arc here in this game tonight. He, he had two subpar games for him in the first two rounds. He's playing with a little chip on his shoulder. That's a great thing. 0 for 9 against UMass, and then 3 of 5 in their semifinal victory, and he already has taken five shots and hit four all from beyond the arc. Here is Brown, a little drop step and a shot that had to change because of David West's challenge. And he won't get a shot block on there, but no question why there was a miss. Well, Sato has gone to the inside, and now he finds the range from the outside. Remain Sato now. 11 points all here in the second half and Thad Mata can certainly uh, feel a lot better if he can get number 10 his versatile sophomore hitting in a variety of ways it's going to be tough for Richmond they say if you're going to sell something get yourself a captive audience oh, what? Sweet. okay there you go this place is going to be a gold mine everyone is your friend Okay, that's enough being friends. A little bit of an offensive explosion here in the second half, and a big part of it remains out of. Check out the hands on this guy. I mentioned it earlier. He's got some of the biggest hands of any perimeter player you're going to find. And because they're so big and strong, his release makes it effortless. Kind of like a Julius Irving size hand. But when he shoots a three, it's like the equivalent of a normal size guy shooting a 10 or 15 footer. Preseason, a lot of talk about Romain Sato, and one of the, the quotes I saw in a publication from you, Tim McCormick, the fact that, uh, you know, he grew up in the Central African Republic, didn't play a lot of organized ball until they came over here, and didn't have a lot of the bad habits that some of the kids had to play AAU ball or playground ball over here. Now, his game is very fresh, and if you talk to his coach, Dad Mata, he'll comment on the fact that he's so willing to learn. Myers kicks it out, Unger there, and that one unable to find the mark. And Xavier with a rebound. They've got the five-point lead, Tim. Second half, Xavier's done a much better job on the glass. Here is West on the inside, challenged by Collins. West gets it again. And five on the way up. Really no deception on what David West is doing right here. They force feed him the ball. Notice, there's two, three, another guy coming late. Now, you think you stopped him, but what a great offensive rebounder, and he's bringing the power offense. You mentioned that Xavier can lose this game and still get the at-large bid. Richmond has to win. Now, obviously, David West and company are coming in here putting on their best effort. They want the A-10 Tournament Championship, but mentally, how is that different in players' mind? Does, does Richmond play with more desperation because of that? No. No, Z Xavier wants this thing bad. And this is new ground for Thad Mata, too. Last year, he was at Butler, had great success with an NCAA win versus Wake. But these guys passionately want this thing on both sides. Brown has it on Hunger now. A 9 0 Xavier run straight away, and that uh, O'Malley three pointer was blocked by West. Well, he's known for shot blocking, but he doesn't usually get the one that far from the basket. Now, West double team. Gets it cross court. Alvin Brown back on the back. Senior hits a huge three. Alvin Brown out of Washington, D.C., where he went to Gonzaga High School. And again, uh, Dan Mata having to go to his bench to the legs of Alvin Brown. And 
Keith Jackson because of David Young being out with that hairline fracture that he sustained in the quarterfinal victory over UMass. Myers drives and lays it in, but a whistle and a foul when the ball was on the court. There's David Young that's sporting the cast on the left hand. Now here is West. He finds the open man. How many foot men can pass like David West? That's another part of his personal game. Nice start here in the second half. Both ends by the Musketeers. Notice the quick ball reversal. You put two guys on David West, somebody's open. And that's Alvin Brown, the fifth-year senior, on the weak side, and when he's running back, he's pointing at his man, David Young, on the bench. Why is that? Because last night or two nights ago, in this play right here, great defense by Young. He goes up. Eric Williams with the hard follow, the takedown, and he has a broken wrist. It's a hairline fracture. Hopefully he'll be back for the NCAAs, but he's a valuable component to this Musketeer attack. How about Xavier? If you look at uh, the numbers that David Young put up for the Musketeers, Xavier, much like last night, went over Dayton. Not a good shooting percentage in the first half, but coming back in the second half, I think, again, sparked by their improved intensity at the defensive end and controlling the board. It's easy to focus on Xavier's offensive firepower, but make no mistake, they don't mess around in the defensive end. Opponents only shoot about 38% from the field. Richmond now facing this nine-point deficit against Xavier. Allen's hands it off now and Sprocky to Myers. Myers has been quiet. He was huge in the victory last night over the LaSalle Explorers. Now Brown watches the three and hits. Reggie Brown able to hit. That's a huge bucket right there because if they wouldn't have scored and Xavier comes down and scores, they could put this thing away. Very important segment right now for the Spiders. Let's see what they can do at the defensive end. Brown now with 18 points. Again, 30 in their opening round victory. And 20 last night. Chalmers, that is short. And the rebound to David West. Sato. And they'll get a fresh shot clock as they approach the halfway mark of the second half here. And the first union vector. Chalmers. Penetrates Brown in the corner. Sato. Another team. Chalmers takes it out. Brown. Open up the three-point line. That's off the front rim. Sato with the rebound. Back to Brown. And they'll start it again. Remember I told you earlier that you could mark it down. Xavier will win the rebounding battle. Richmond has done a pretty good job of keeping it close. However, Xavier's starting to flex their muscles, and now they have a six-rebound advantage. Brown's pass was tipped, but it's Sato that comes up with a 15 on the shot clock. No need to hurry. Chalmers hands it off to Brown. Brown lost his footing. And what have we got? A three-second violation. It is called against David West. And David West had his toe in the lane. He's got size 16 feet. Look at his toes right there. Well, there's something on the court. See, he's pointing at the fact that... Oh, okay. Yeah, and Romain Sato looks like he slipped. I thought they called him for three seconds, and they may have. As I said, David West has size 16s. If, if he was only a 14, that would have been a three-second call. Well, what a season David West has had for the Xavier Musketeers. 6'8 junior out of Garner, North Carolina. He's at the first chair as a tuba player in high school. <laughs> also plays the drums. Very versatile kid, well-rounded. Nice. Love talking. He's a great kid. You know, he has great parents, too. Talent hands it off to Unger. Pass the halfway mark now with his half. Richmond, though, remaining very patient. Whether they trailed as they did in the first half. They do again here in the second, or they've had the lead. They pretty much play the same ball game. Unger with a jump step, and that's a difficult pass that was uh, collected there by Sprocky, but then had it knocked away by Sato. Now take a look at the shot clock. There's only four seconds. It's going to have to be aggressive possession by the Spiders. Sato and his buddies have done a great job picking up their defense here in the second half. There's Mr. West. Travels all over the place watching his son. He had a chance to interview him earlier in the year. He actually breaks down a lot of tape, talks to his son about David Robinson. He thinks that his son can eventually become like the Admiral, a versatile guy that affects the game at both ends. 
His dad, Amos, also uh, pointed to another pretty good pro by the name of James Worthy. And the uh, lob pass leads to the contact there from Sato, who picks up his third. You know, Amos West told Dave he likes the pros that get the job done and don't show off. There's no showmanship about him. James Worthy was that way. The Admiral was that way. And David West is that way. He absolutely is. David West is going to have a great future. I, I look at his game. He's a center in college. We'll have to play power forward in the NBA. And right now, if you look at some of the players in the NBA, you compare him to, he's probably built more like a small forward at this point. Remain Sato is third foul. Mike Scrocky at the foul line. It's a great story about Scrocky. You know his girlfriend is? Her name is Shauna, and it's Coach Beeline's daughter. Well, that's a great way to get yeah. some extra minutes, isn't it? Not, not the court. Did you see that? He stepped right yes, up. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And so the backcourt violation. That not as club, but guilty of a turnover, so... Just as you mentioned, with that huge three that Reggie Brown hit when it was a nine-point game, and we take a look at Chalmers, and right there. That is. This is a well-coached game, Dave. Both sides. This is some excellent basketball. And a foul here is going to go against Sato. And if that is his fourth. That is a huge call. And Romain Sato is going to have to sit down. And he has been such a big factor in Xavier getting uh, off so well here in the second half. Hitting all 11 of his points. And that's a big concern because when Sato goes down, it wouldn't kill them in the past because Dave Young was there. But now because he's hurt, they have very little depth. And let's watch. He flies right through the screen. You know, with Dad Mata was screaming, he said, uh, Chalmers got pushed down the over and back. You're letting a little bit go at one end, out of the other. Here is Collins attacking the basket. Stop with that up hand in And Kevin Fry can't believe he didn't draw the offensive foul as he went crashing to the court. This trap is really extended out on the court. This is a good time to get the ball to David West. Well, this has been a game of runs, and now Richmond on a 7-0 run of their own. Notice they're fronting West in the low post. Jackson, the fly out to Chalmers. Chalmers spins away from the pressure. Down to eight on the shot clock. Fly in the corner. Out to Chalmers with five on the shot clock. Brown hands it off to Jackson. Picks it off to Chalmers. Gets it away with one on the shot clock. And it rattles in and out. And here comes Richmond with a chance to tie or take the lead. size advantage on Chalmers. And away from the ball, uh, I believe a timeout was called here with 10 seconds on the shot clock. And John Beeline, his fifth year here at Richmond, his first year in the Atlantic 10. John Beeline, I know his players are tired, but they've got an advantage. Earlier this year, they played a tournament in Las Vegas in which they played three straight days. On the third day, his team beat Southwest Missouri State. So they've got some positive experiences in a three-day situation. Well, tomorrow night, catch ESPN's first original motion picture starring Brian Dennehy. Follow Bobby Knight, the controversial college basketball coach, and his Indiana Hoosiers through a season on the break. Presented by Miller Lite. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. ESPN and ESPN2 will present two airings, an unedited version here on ESPN, and edited with reduced audible adult language over on ESPN2. Part of the lock on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Real similarities between John Beeline's system and Bobby Knight's. Very structured, passing game, defense oriented. Bad modest, too. A lot of the same principles. And late in the shot clock, Reggie Brown had to force up a running one hander that we're going to let it out. Well, they try to go inside to West, but it's knocked away. Fighters have numbers. It goes to Sprocky all the way. That is knocked away. Goaltending is the call on Keith Jackson. Count the basket. 
Well, remember back to that big three-pointer that was in by Reggie Brown. That's what sparked all this, and Richmond has tied the ball game. And here, Richmond, 19 points off of turnovers. Reggie Brown, the 18 points, four of seven from behind the arc. Xavier's hit 10 of 11 free throws. They generally go to the line a lot more than their opponents, although Richmond is uh, six for six from the line, and you see the numbers on Chalmers, including four of eight from behind the arc. Second half, they've forgotten about David West. 0 for 2 from the field. Now, at some point, he's going to get more involved, and you throw him the ball and say, we're riding you, big boy, go to work. But so far, I just, I'm not seeing some great interior passes. He's also got to get big and say, give me the ball. Well, they tried to lob it to him there. Ill advised it was well covered by Unger. He slapped it out to Reggie Brown, and the Spiders with a chance to grab the lead again. Just like a spider has long arms and legs, this defense, look at him on the perimeter. These guys all have very long arms. You swear all of these defenders have eight arms. The Arachnids. Now Myers. Ten seconds on the shot clock. He's being watched now by West. Myers again with ball fake. Five on the shot clock. He goes all the way with West. Trailing and West got the block and the Jackson. Got a piece of the rebound and picked up now by Chalmers. And there's something on the court by the officials uh, stopping the play here. A little bit of an offensive famine for the Musketeers. They have to get more aggressive going to the basket. Well, tomorrow ESPN has extensive coverage of the women's and men's fields of 64 and 5 Eastern. Robert Roberts exclusively will unveil the women's brackets in the NCAA Women's Tournament Special. At 6 Eastern, Sports Center will reveal the men's brackets, plus have other sports new today. The then at 7 Eastern, Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps, Dick Vitale, Jay Phillips, and Mike Tirico will be joined by special guests, including Bobby Knight, Roy Williams, Ernie Kent, as they analyze this year's field of 65 of the men's NCAA selection special presented by Staples. A lot of the bubble teams are watching this game with great interest, rooting hard for Xavier. Southern Illinois and Charlotte, three of the Big East teams, Syracuse and St. John. Here is West after the offensive rebound, no good, and Collins comes away with it. Well, you're absolutely right, Tim, because a Richmond victory knocks out one of those bubble teams. Because Richmond doesn't go if they lose. Here's Collins, and he had it knocked away by West. David West got a piece of that. I don't know if that'll get out as a shot block, but he knocked it away, and Chalmers just fouled as he was going to the basket. And let's see if he will shoot, too. The official's talking it over. I believe he's going to go to the line to shoot a pair. David West is a two-way defender. He covers his man and everybody else on the floor. Oh, yeah. That's a great block. Yes, it is. He's got long arms, great timing. He's a superior athlete. So Chalmers going uh, to the free throw line for the first time here this evening, and that rattles in and out. time in this game with Romain Sato for the home stretch. 5.39, he's got four fouls. He's an aggressive player. He has to really think his way through the rest of this game. So he is back in the ball game with the four fouls and his team holding a one-point lead. That battle couldn't wait much longer. That's how important Romain Sato is for the Xavier team. Quick pull-up shot there by Sprocky Ryan in and out. Here, Sato comes away with it. The Sprott may be able to put the ball on the deck to the basket because Sato cannot afford to cover him. That's possession. Here is Chalmers. Pulls up for the three. Boy, what a job he did there on Reggie Brown. Just kind of rocking him to sleep with the crossover dribbles. And Brown has to respect Chalmers' ability to attack the basket. He pulls up and hits the three. And that's the matchup I really enjoyed this game. Head-to-head -head Brown Chalmers. 16 points, and there he is. Rocky attacking, but he had the ball locked away. Here is Chalmers. All the way to the basket, lays it up. No good tip by Sato. Uh-oh, uh -oh, foul. That's five. Romain Sato called for the foul. I have to admit, I did not see that. It was over the back on the offensive rebound, Dave. Romain Sato is done, so he played, what, less than a minute? That punch is going to fly out of your screen. Position over the back. It wasn't aggressive, but it was over the back, and there was contact. It's just definitely a judgment call, but here's Sato coming, late in your screen. Yeah, 
boy. <laughs> I don't call that, that. No, I don't call that one. No, that that is a very very tough call on Romain Sato under those circumstances. And you see his numbers: 11.6 rebounds. All of those points here in the second half. Romain Sato was second team All Conference selection. Very difficult, but you know what? You've got to look at it this way. There was contact, and in this position, you've got to stay on the floor. Any play that may be questionable, you cannot go over a player's back because that's the easiest call for an official to make. Well, it's going to be Richmond basketball, and they trail by four. I think they're talking about the number of fouls. It's not going to be in the penalty. Next foul for Xavier. The Spiders will be shooting. Richmond with just uh, 14 fouls, and Jason Williams comes in and says, All right, guys, I'm not going to let you down. He hit some important buckets in the first half. Another huge possession here for Richmond. And Brown, a high arcing three that's off the back iron, and Albert Brown has the rebound. Thompson again being watched by Reggie Brown. Williams on the inside to West. West kicks it out to Chalmers. Xavier won both regular season meetings against the Richmond Spiders, including a spirited game that was played at Richmond. West on the inside and helping out was Collins. And Collins is going to be called for the foul. That'll be his third. David West, look at them once again. He's getting so much attention from their defense. His game is diversified. He's multi-dimensional. What does he do? He scores with ease. He shares the ball down there. He's the best rebounder in the A-10, the best shot blocker. Shoots a high field goal percentage. Leads the A-10 in that category as well. He shoots a high free throw percentage. Nearly 77%. David West, uh, just one rebound shy of his 15th double-double as you look at uh, his ranking. In Musketeer history, already second in blocks. Started all 92 games in his uh, Xavier career. And now we call Penn State linebacker U. You're going to have to call Xavier forward university with Brian Grant, Aaron Williams, James Posey, and Tyrone Hill. All NBA players. David West will be next. Myers now handing it off to Strocky. Strocky. Brown trying to stay with him. It comes to Myers. Myers into the lane. Kicks it back out to Unger. Unger thought about it. Hands it back. Myers launches the three. And that is no good. West with a big rebound there. Just over three and a half now left in the ballgame. Still a two-possession game with six-point Xavier lead. And Xavier in no rush now. They can use a little bit of the shot clock. Jason Williams, lob pass, Fly was cutting, Fly with the ball, fake, lays it in, Kevin Fly on a nice feed from Jason Williams. You know, at times we're critical of the Musketeers' ability to pass, that was a great delivery. And here is a steal by Williams, he goes all the way and lays it up short. Oh, Jason Williams who's in the ball game because of the falling out of Romain Sato made a huge defensive play and then just couldn't finish. Don't you put that off the glass? Inside the Brown tried to draw contact and he may have, but nothing called. And Fry now gives it off to Chalmers. An 8 0 Xavier run. It was sparked by Lionel Chalmers' three pointer a few minutes ago. Bob on the inside to West and he goes to the left hand and lays it in. Great communication there between Chalmers and West. Once again, he put the ball exactly on the money. Great, great pass. Backdoor cut, and Chalmers got down low to block the bounce pass. He'll pull up with a three. Is this the dagger? No. It rattles in and out. For a 10-point ball game, we're still over two minutes to go. There's time for Richmond, but they need to have something happen positive at the offensive end, and Myers just cannot find the range. The big challenge now for Richmond. They're going to need some triples. Who leads the Atlantic 10 in covering the three-point line? The Xavier Musketeers. Now, 
on this pass right here, they threw it right to the corner of the backboard. Nice catch, beautiful left hand. Right here, watch, you've got, look at, there's nobody covering. Late on the rotation, they threw it right to the American flag there on the corner of the backboard. Very patriotic play by Lionel Chalmers. Well, you mentioned Xavier's ability to cover the three. Richmond with two timeouts uh, remaining. And Xavier with three. Richmond has the possession arrow. But Jeff Myers, who uh, had a huge game last night, 18 points. He hit four out of seven from behind the arc. He is 0 for 6 from the floor tonight. The junior from uh, Rockford, Illinois, where he attended Boylan Catholic High School. That was a career-high 18 points last night. And when you look at Myers, you think to yourself, boy, you know, he can't play on this level. He's not a great athlete. He doesn't look real strong. But when he's out there, he just makes plays. He has a huge assist-turnover ratio. Championship week presented by 7-Up, winding down. But, boy, we got a great one here. The Atlantic 10 Tournament Finals. From the first union spectrum, Dave Trader, Tim McCormick. Xavier ranked 23rd in the country. Taking on Richmond Chalmers, had it parked away, but able to stay with it. Again, Xavier taking some time off the clock. Romain Sato has fouled out for the Musketeer. At this point, you really trim your playbook down. Shot clock at five. Well, I don't think that's in the playbook. Lionel Chalmers going in against three defenders and finishing off the glass. And a very happy and relieved Romain Sato. 18 for Chalmers now. You need threes. Xavier covers the three-point line better than anybody. Rocky pulls up for the two that's off the front glass. Rock, oh, wow. He threw the elbow. No question about that against Under. You know, that should be a foul on Fry. You cannot throw an elbow like that. Somebody could get seriously hurt. Watch this. There was some bad blood between these teams. You have to admit it. At Richmond, the last time they played, the Musketeers made a big-time comeback late in the game. There was some talking in the tunnel afterward. Well, the officials are talking it over. Yeah, you can't throw an elbow. You cannot yeah. do that. Well, Donnie Gray, the official right there in the middle of it, he uh, I could, he is the gentleman on the left, and I thought I could read him slip saying, I had the elbow. I saw the elbow, so let's see what the call is going to be. It just has to be a flagrant foul, Dave. You cannot throw an elbow at somebody's face. I know we didn't see him, but you can't clear a guy out that way. Minute eight remaining, Xavier with the 12-point lead. It's unfortunate because Kevin Fry is such a big part of this win. He's a heady player. He plays a macho game. Well, let's go back to their uh, their last meeting, February 2nd. This was at Richmond, their biggest crowd, and a 16-point lead for the home team. Evaporated, led by Jason Williams, and the Xavier players celebrated. And the big crowd in Richmond didn't like it. Unger had a chance at the buzzer to tie it. And there was a lot of celebration on the sidelines. And uh, the Xavier players, uh, led by Kevin Fry, giving it to the crowd there in Richmond. And they went into the tunnel. Their locker rooms were right next to each other. There was some talking back and forth, some pushing, some shoving. Some people say there was a fight. We cannot confirm or deny that. And now we're going to have a decision. Well, a long discussion here as to what the uh, final verdict is going to be against Kevin Fry, who unquestionably threw the elbow. They're trying to get the foul. Ouch. Great. The lucky it didn't hit him in the chin. It went right underneath. Yeah. That's a play right there. If you take a shot on the chin, you're knocked out. The referees have done a real nice job. They got in between immediately. Separated the guys. Cooler heads definitely prevailed. It seemed like nobody was real angry after the play, except for Ungler, which he had a right to be. Now you see the official indicating what he saw with the motion of the elbow. So both 
coaches. John Beeline of Richmond on the left, Dad Mata on the right of Xavier getting the full explanation. So give the officiating crew uh, full marks for discussing this because not all of them saw it. There has to be communication between officials. These are some big, like this. These are some big time coaches. They run classy programs. It's a cheap shot. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that maybe he didn't know he was there. I he did yeah, know he, he was he there. From he that angle. Yeah. End of a game situation. He's going in for a hard foul. You know, once the guy makes contact, the foul is committed. Kevin Price just got to walk away from that and get his free throw. Going to call a personal foul on Unger, which is the correct call, and then a technical foul on Fry from throwing an elbow. Right. And it was considered a, a dead ball because the, the play had been stopped by the foul that was committed by Unger. So in this situation, Xavier will go ahead and shoot fouls. They'll get a one and one situation because they're in the bonus. Excuse me. And at the other end, Richmond will get the technical free throws for an unsportsmanlike foul. Well, there's a question here. I, I'm looking up and it says uh, only 16 fouls against Richmond. So why would Fly be shooting? That's a great question because I thought that it had said six right away, but they didn't put the next foul up. The scoreboard isn't always right uh, in these situations in terms of so if that's the case, then they will get the technical free throw. Scrocky will shoot it, being a dead-eye shooter. This had been such an incredibly cleanly played game. Yeah. Very little controversy. We had heard there was bad blood beforehand. Did not see any indication whatsoever of that. Well, they have played this uh, very competitively, but as you mentioned, very cleanly. who uh, hits nearly 79% from the free throw line. The sophomore very calmly steps up and hits both. So it is a 10-point game with just over a minute remaining. And with the remains Sato on the bench, other guys have to step up. Chalmers able to make a difficult uh, basket and remains Sato for the bench. Couldn't feel better. Come on, made the big 15-4 run. They continue to lead the Trojans by four points in Los Angeles for the Pac-10 championship. Next up on ESPN, the Big East championship. You'll see Karan Butler for UConn, Brandon Knight for Pittsburgh, co-players of the year, the two best teams in the league for the title coming up next. All right, Chris, that follows us here in uh, Philadelphia. Let's take a look at the Big East, Tim, and the uh, RPI numbers. I like the Big East getting five teams in. St. John's is the bubble team. Kind of interesting. St. John's, Syracuse, and BC, three teams with 20 wins in the Big Big East. Never before has a team from the Big East had 20 wins and not gotten in. That's going to happen for the first time. Well, Richmond, after hitting the two uh, technical free throws, gets the ball. Dobbins, on the catch, was unable to control it. I think that was a shot. I don't think he was trying the uh, lob inside. But Dobbins almost had a great opportunity to get his club to within eight. Well, Xavier, in their seventh year in the league, trying for their second tournament championship. They won it in 1998 over George Washington, James Posey, now with the Denver Nuggets with the emphatic slam. He was the tournament's most valuable player. That is Skip Prosser on the left and Mike Jarvis, then coaching GW, as they shake hands. 77-63 was the final, so this would be Xavier's second. And uh, we, of course, have mentioned several times that Thad Mata is in his uh, first year here in the Atlantic 10. Four of the uh, Musketeers that year made the all-tournament list, but only two coaches have come into the Atlantic 10 in their first year and won the tournament. Roy Chapman did it with Pittsburgh in 1981, and Bob Wenzel did it with Rutgers in 1989. So Thad Mata continuing to write the script to a great first year here in the Atlantic 10 with Xavier. ESPN's own Bob Wenzel. That's right. Dobbins again under the basket trying to get control. Had it knocked away. It's going to be a foul here against the uh, Musketeers. And they are over the limit, so Richmond will go to the line. And just not enough time left. I don't believe for the Richmond Spiders. 
In the end, the final story for John Beeline's team was that, to me, they looked tired. They're a perimeter-oriented team. They used great energy to get to this point. In the last 10 minutes, they just didn't seem to have the quickness that Xavier has. Well, they had 35 points in the first half, Richmond did, and Thad Mata's club has just shut him down here with his defense. And there's a look at the uh, regular season titles that have been won by rookie coaches. Claude English at URI and Tom Penders with the GW. And there's a Bob Wenzel and Roy Chipman that we talked about. And Mata would be the first to win both the regular season and tournament in his first season in the Atlantic 10. How about that? Great job. You know, one of the challenges for Thad Mata, when you coach great talent, you never seem to get the credit that you truly deserve. Everybody says, well, you've got West and Sato and look at Chalmers, but this team is very fundamental. They play a system. It's not always pretty, but they execute what Thad Mata wants done. I think a great uh, testimony to uh, Thad Mata. You talk to the players that love to play for Skip Prosser, and they talk about the fact they haven't missed a beat. They can't wait to come to the gym for practice, for for games. They love what Thad Mata's done for them. That says it all. So the Xavier Musketeers, and for the first time, since 1990, the Atlantic 10, it appears we'll have only one team in the NCAA tournament. Dad Mata with a big hug for his assistant coaches and the players on the bench. by a final score 73 to 60. Coming up next year on ESPN, the ConAgra Food Big East Championship from Madison Square Garden. For Tim McCormick and the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Peter. This has been a presentation of ESPN for Worldwide Theater and Sports for More. Log on to ESPN.com. They did it in 98. They've done it again in 02. The Xavier Musketeers are the A-10 Tournament Champions. Let's go back.